gospel singing, gospel message in the song. All right, we ready to settle down here now? Everybody, get your Bibles open this morning. We're going to turn to two passages of Scripture and I'll bring the message today. We'll start out in Genesis chapter 19 uh, this morning. Then we're going to be looking at a verse in Luke chapter 17. So get those two places there and hold them right quick. I want everybody to look at this with me, if you would, please, and listen uh, to God's Word. Genesis 19 is the very well-known, infamous chapter and story of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. My, uh, horrible, horrible scene back there many, many years ago. And uh, I'm not going to deal, I, I will be talking about it, but we're going to be talking about a little portion of that story. Now, here in Genesis chapter 19, you understand, uh, here's what, what the Lord does. Um, verse 23, Genesis 19, 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire. You hear those old fire and brimstone crazy people? Well, God's the one that did that. So be careful before you start being critical of what we call a hell, fire, and brimstone preacher. That's the only kind they are that's real. A preacher that don't preach on hell, fire, and brimstone ought to be fired and run out of town. God rained brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities. Wow. Was it, God must have been a hater. He'd be called a hater today. He'd be called a bigot and, uh, and a mean person by today's standards. But he said he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities. And that which grew upon the ground. Nothing else couldn't even grow there. Verse 26, here's what I want you to look at. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. She became a pillar of salt. Look at Luke chapter 17. The Lord Jesus brings this story up in one of the most stern warnings in the entire Bible. When he said in Luke 17, 32, only three words. Ladies, men, look at this. Remember Lot's wife. Of all the warnings in the Bible, there's one of the strongest. Jesus, looking at these bunch of people, he said, you better remember Lot's wife. What did she do? When they were running out of Sodom, she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. I want to preach this morning on the subject, the danger of looking back. The danger of looking back. It's amazing the Lord brings up this story. Now, by way of introduction, you want to notice this. The Lord brings up this story in the New Testament, which shows that the stories in the Old Testament were literally true. They really happened. They weren't allegories. They weren't uh, symbolic figures of right and wrong. Jesus said, remember this woman, Lot's wife. It also shows the proper manner of preaching and teaching is to take stories out of the Bible and apply them to our everyday life. That's what Jesus Christ did, the greatest teacher. The greatest teacher in the world, Jesus Christ, taught by illustration. He said, you want to know how you're going to live in the last days? You better remember Lot's wife. The Lord was constantly bringing up Jonah and stuff like that. That means the Lord himself put his stamp of approval on the 39 books in the Old Testament that we have here now. Not the Apocrypha. Not the so-called lost books of the Bible. They cram in some in the Catholic Church. The 39 books inspired Genesis to Malachi in the Old Testament, just like you've got them right here in front of you this morning. The same God that inspired the Bible preserved the Bible so that you and I can have it today. So the Lord's method of teaching is illustration for our learning. 
Usually, when this story is preached on, we talk about the sin of Sodom and the fire and all that. We're going to talk about that. But today, I'm going to focus on that one phrase, remember Lot's wife. And the message is to all of you Christians here today, be real careful about after you've been serving God for a while, of looking back at that old life and them old friends and that old pastime and the old movies and the old music and the old good old boys that you used to get high with and the old good old guys you used to date. Be careful about looking back. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna get ahead of myself here a little bit, but she didn't go back. She just looked back. It's dangerous just to look back. Amen? Uh, the old Chinese proverb is, he who keep looking back soon be headed that way. You listen? He who keep looking back soon be headed that way. Now let's remember the story here. If you need brushing up on it, I hope you've read it in the last few weeks, starting out in January. Two angels came to Lot of Sodom at even. And the Bible said, these angels come to Lot, and they said, look, we've had it with this place. God is going to burn this place to the ground. You understand? You've got to get you, your wife, your kids, your, son, your girls, your sons-in-law, everybody you've got, and get them out of here. And Lot, of course, went. He took them in. The men of Sodom, the Bible said in Genesis 13, 13, Remember the 13s? Genesis 13, 13 says the men of Sodom were wicked and exceeding sinners before the Lord. You understand what was going on there. It started out with fullness of bread and idleness and abundance of, of, uh, of, of bread and, and idleness and laying around all the time on the couch playing video games. And the, the sin of Sodom uh, became homosexuality. And God destroyed. It's still called sodomy on the police books now when that uh, crime is committed. And uh, regardless of what this generation has to say or think, God has never changed his mind how he's felt about that sin. It's still the same. I know, I know that's politically incorrect, but if you are politically correct, you are biblically perverted. And so uh, the, the, the sin was here, and the angels come, and they said, look, we're going to burn this place down. I mean, God not approve of this? Uh, they said, well, the Supreme Court, I don't care what the Supreme Court said, God is going to burn this place to the ground. Do you understand? And then Lot goes in and gets his wife and gets his daughters, and he had those married daughters who had sons-in-law, his daughters that were married, and he had two daughters that were still at home. And so Lot said, we got to get out of here. we got to get out of here. And some of them stayed and wouldn't listen. And those two angels had to literally grab Lot. Two angels, that's four hands. Lot, his wife, older daughter, younger daughter. The two angels used them four hands and literally pulled them out of that city. And he said, when you get out of here, don't you look back. Don't you worry about this city. God's done with this. You head for the hills out there in the country, and I've got a place for you. So they pulled them out, and they said, get out of here. Run. And they were running out of town like this, and something inside his wife made her turn around and look back. And when she did, she became, bam, a pillar of salt as a, as a monument testimony of looking back. Now, we'll talk more about that in just a minute. You understand, you do understand this, don't you? Uh, that, that, that's where the Dead Sea is, or the remains of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the saltiest place in the entire, I mean, the, there's so much salt in the Dead Sea, they thought you can throw an egg in it, and it'll float. Nothing can live there. Nothing can grow up from the ground, and it is the lowest place on planet Earth. That is not an accident. The lowest place on earth is the remains of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's not an accident. That's in the Bible for a reason, buddy. Uh, that's a, uh, below sea level. 1,300 something feet below sea level. Ladies and gentlemen, what, listen to this story this morning. Number one, her peril. Her peril. They lived in a city. Lot, uh, Sodom, no doubt, was a, was a big, prosperous 
unscriptural, I might add, and doomed city. It was never God's plan for all everybody to get together. You know, God likes people to get out in the country and grow garden and raise your family. You're, you're better off to be raised out in the country than you are in a city any day of the week. And the bigger the city, the more money the city, the more people the city, the more sin is in that city. And Sodom and Gomorrah had become wonderful big cities without God. I, I know uh, I've traveled a lot. I've been to New York City. I've been to Hollywood. I've been to Los Angeles. I've been to Dallas, Texas. I've been to Chicago. I've been to uh, Miami. I've been to uh, Atlanta. I've been right in the middle of them. I mean, I've preached in most of them places, right downtown. And, buddy, you get a feeling like you do not feel out here in the country of this part of them. There's a different spirit. And when that, you get all them people together and the devil gets in there and them big old buildings and mine, that it seems like demons just inhabit that place uh, like pigeons and birds, uh, those, uh, pictures of them come into those cities. And it was a very, very big city. It was a prosperous city. Sodom had become so wicked uh, that it's just, uh, it, God had to pronounce judgment on it. And it got full of the sin of adultery and not just homosexuality, all kinds of going after strange flesh and look and murder and sin and all kinds of things. And brother, it just got so bad, finally God says, nope, no further. Stopping right there and pronounce judgment on the city. Her peril. Number two, I want you to notice her pleasures. Her pleasures. She had all that city had to offer. Now remember this, uh, she had married Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Lot was a good man. He's backslid and he vexed his righteous soul with us, what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. But he was a just man, the Bible said. Now, I don't know his wife's name. It don't say it. Historians try to name her Edu or Zeth or something like that. But the Bible don't say her name. She may have been a native of that part of the country. So Lot marries this girl, and him and her have some kids, and they're raising their kids in Sodom. They are ra Now listen, when you raise your kids in Sodom, you're, it's, it's going to get in them if you ain't really, really careful. I know people think we're crazy because we try to keep our kids protected. and uh, People say, well, you've got to let them get out and find out what's out there. No, you do not. They don't have to know every dirty, rotten, low-down, ungodly thing that's going on out there. Thank God. And the world says, oh, you've done... The Bible said be wise concerning good and simple concerning evil. You kids, you don't have to know... You say, well, I'll get on the internet because I just want to see what all that old sin. No, you don't. You're better off not even knowing it. You're better off not even knowing The Bible said it's a shame to even speak of them things that are done to them in secret. Her pleasure. Lord, I don't know what all the pleasure was. We use our imagination a little bit. Uh, but uh, I'm telling you, I got to thinking about it the other night as I was studying this. And I thought all the attractions in Sodom. Uh, I, I have, we've had people come here and visit with us, and you know what the first thing they say is? They say, they say what do y'all do around here? And what they mean is, they've been in a place where there's clubs and, and shows, and, and, oh, and I thought, uh, I said, well, kids go fishing, you know, and, uh, and just go squirrel hunting, and, and uh, uh, amen, and we breathe fresh air and drink clean water and, and serve God and die and go to heaven. You got something better than that? Yeah. <laughs> amen. Better than breathing smog and living in sin and, and, and getting in all kinds of hell on earth. I mean, out here in the, out here in the country. So don't ever, don't ever worry about somebody making fun of you because you're in the country. Lord, I first went to Flint, Michigan and preached up there. And I was like 22, three years old. I preached up there and they laughed at me. They said, you are so hillbilly. They said, do you live in Mayberry? And I said, yep. And, uh, and they said, do you have running water? And I said, yeah, and you can drink it. Uh, amen. That's right. Amen right there. We're not hurting this morning. Uh, Abraham was over there with Sarah and his wife living the good life. Well, Lot and his, his was losing about everything they ever had. And the pleasures of the city are not what they're cracked up to be. Look, sometimes I go, I see Atlanta or Charlotte, and honest to goodness, the, the person in me, I, you can't help but admire them. I mean, them big old, it's amazing how they built them buildings. Unbelievable. 80, 90 stories high, and, uh, and the Empire State Building. And, and you look at that and they say, wow, isn't that beautiful? But as a Christian, the whole time I'm seeing that, something in me is saying, down in them streets and in them homes 
There's little kids being molested and beat. They're being molested. You can never look at it again the same. It's not just, wow, Los Angeles is beautiful. If you saw the sin and the kids that are being tortured and murdered and right, every single day. I bring it up. You, you probably don't want to hear it. But uh, did you know, you do understand that the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is the they say that the main event of the whole year for human sex trafficking, that's today, selling little boys and little girls for perverts at the Super Bowl today. I, I'm, I'm not blaming the game. There's nothing wrong with the game itself. And you, but, but while you're enjoying it, just keep in mind, this world ain't what it's cracked up to be. There's little kids being sold to some as many as 40 a night 12 and 13 year old girls. Look it up if you don't believe me. The statistics are there. They're trying to fight it. The news media won't mention it because they don't want the world to be in a bad light. But I'm telling you this morning, we're living in a wicked world, people. There ain't nothing wrong with it. So watching a ball game. I'm not saying it's simple or anything like that. But just keep in mind, see all the beautiful buildings of Sodom? You better remember the sin still there. Ladies and gentlemen, the sin, the attraction was there. I'm telling you, brother, the restaurants were there. Lots of what I said, I don't want to move. Honey, we're moving. Why? God said to, I don't want to move. Out there in the country, are you kidding? I like all of our restaurants. They, we got all kinds of restaurants here to go to. We have the Sodom Garden uh, that we go to every few weeks. I have a gift certificate to go. Uh, we have the Gamora Roadhouse, and I enjoy going there too. And, 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 the, and the Gay Chicken Wings, you know, we like to go there uh, every two or three uh, Friday nights uh, out, of, out of three. And, and the Tranny's uh, Crab Shack, uh, Transgender Crab Shack, I don't know what that. Uh, we have the finest seafood, uh, Sodom House the hottest nightclubs, of the hottest spots of the band. Did you know who's going to be playing here? Did you know Jay-Z and them's going to be here? We can't leave. Yes, we can. God said he's going to burn it down. You know why God, the angels had to drag them out of there? They didn't want to leave. I'm telling you, don't get your roots too far down here in this world, people, because we're leaving. One day he's going to snatch us out of here. I'm telling you, the sooner the better as far as I'm concerned. He could do it today. I'd say, pull the switch, Lord. Hey, Amen. You think he ain't got something better up there? One girl told me one time, she said, Brother Danny, you talk about the Lord coming back. Quit talking like that. I said, I don't want the Lord to come back till I get married. I thought, that's the dumbest kid I've talked to in a long time. She honestly thinks getting married is better than going to heaven. Tell them, married people. I mean, it's good, but it ain't heaven. It can be hell. I'm telling you, brother, listen, every, God's got something a lot better than what we've got down here. Woo, hallelujah, amen. Oh, they want to go. And her daughters, Lord have mercy, they was off there. I mean, can you imagine? Lot's wife had his influence. He taught her, he said, honey, we don't live like these people. I mean, I mean, I, he sat in the gate. He pitched his tent toward Sodom. They saw that stuff all the time. But he said, honey, we don't live like that. And she said, but honey, our girls are growing up and they've got to be kids. And I don't think there's anything wrong with letting them go there and letting them go there. And I don't, he said, I'm telling you, this place is wicked. Well, they pulled him in one day. Here come Lot. Lot's two little old sassy daughters. Oh, Lord. I can just see them. Hey, man, my, I mean, brother, they was paint, their lips was painted up about that thick, and they had on, uh, their, their lips was pierced, and, I mean, they had purple hair, and, I mean, they come in, and honey said, she said, Honey, we need to talk to you. And she just Act like a demon possessed them. Can't be still or on crack or meth or something. And, uh, and they said, honey, we need to talk. Honey, get them things out of your ears. What, mama? We're moving. I'm not. I stay with my friends. Honey, we are moving. The Lord's going to burn this place. Oh, please don't say that in front of my friend's mother. Please. Now I'm saying, Mama, I'm saying, and we're going to a party Friday night, and we're going to have, she said, Honey, your daddy said we got to move. I'm not going. I'll run away. You can't stop me. <laughs> Honey, now listen. It's, uh, you're, I know you're 14, and you think you know everything, but you're, you're going to have me to deal with. And she said, Cash me outside, how about that? 
What? I don't know where I come from. <laughs> that, that little girl, I guarantee you, that's what she said. She said, what did you say? She said, catch me outside about that. She said, where in the world do you learn how to talk like that? She said, in the streets. Now, she learned that out there in them streets, brother. She learned that out there in them streets. The Bible said them men of Sodom abided in the streets. She said, girl, can't you speak English? What's wrong with you? We're moving. I bet you they had their hands full with them too. I bet you the Lot's daughters pitched the biggest fit. No, we're not going. You're going to go in your Sunday school class. I don't want to. One kid I told him, they said, get in your Sunday school class. And they said, I don't think, I don't think. I said, well, you don't do that at regular school. You don't go to regular school and sit out in the hallway. You go in the class where you're supposed to be, right? Amen. He said, well, school's different. Yeah, I know it is different. It's about one thousandth as important as Sunday school. Amen. Maybe a millionth. Hey, the pleasures of Sodom. All the sports. She'd miss all the ball games. The frat parties. The concerts. Molly, get your clothes packed. We're leaving town. She says, I'm not going to do it. We're going to go to a concert Friday night. And then Saturday night, and we got the prom planned, and I got my dress, and it's down to here. <laughs> my goodness, y'all, you're too strict already. She said, listen, we're leaving. The angels come get us out of here. Now let's go. God's going to burn this place down. Oh, that's from my daddy. He's got all these religious beliefs in his head. I asked my teacher at school, and she said that was not true, that fire cannot fall out of the sky and burn up nothing. What's wrong with you people? She said, I'm telling you, you little brat, you better get your stuff ready, because we're having to move and get out of here. It went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And, oh, by the way, the Bible said when them, them angels came to Abraham's house, in chapter 18, and the Bible said, Abraham, listen to this, nothing's in the Bible by accident. The Bible said, Abraham said, Sarah, she was in the tent. Yes, sir. We got company. Can you fix them up something to eat? They went in there, man, they fixed up. They killed a cow and fixed steaks, and they fixed uh, yeast rolls and had all kind of stuff, uh, bread, and, and, raised, and fixed them a big meal. And in 19, they come to Lot's house, and the Bible said, Lot went in. And fixed the meal. What's that? Where's his wife? She's a girl's night out. We see how that girl come, how she looked back. She's out with the girls. Ain't no wonder her daughters was so wicked. You think them little girls wasn't wicked? Reading the rest of that chapter, what they'd done to their daddy. Got him drunk, committed incest. And he was more wicked than they was. Whew. We're getting rough here now. Hang on, you're going to make it. Number three, her privileges. Her privileges. You know what Lot, Lot's wife's privileges was? You know why she ought to have been thankful? Number one, she had a saved husband. She ought to thank God for Lot. If it hadn't been for Lot, they'd have all burned up. Kids and all. Brother Lot at least had some faith. Listen, if you've got a man that wants to live right and serve God, you ladies, you ought to thank God for him. You say, well, he's not as exciting as that one at work. Yeah, but that pervert at work, if he messed mess with you and you're married, you don't need to be around somebody like that. No way. She had a saved husband. Amen. Not only that, he, uh, she had a praying uncle. Abraham was over there praying for them. You don't believe it? God was going to destroy the whole crowd one day. And Abraham said, wait, wait, Lord, wait. If I can find 50 righteous people, will you spare? He was praying for them. And if Abraham hadn't have prayed, God would have killed them all. Thank God. Listen, you kids here this morning, instead of fussing about your parents making you come to church and wanting you to do right and making you to come home at the right time of night and making you not watch dirty movies, you ought to thank God somebody's standing between you and hell and the devil and keeping the devil off of you. She had a praying uncle. And then she had a special visit from two angels. She had some privileges. It ain't everybody that two angels comes to their house and literally gets them out of sin and pulls them out. If God's visited your house, if God's helped you, if God's helped pull you out of sin, you ought to thank God for it. 
Many people have seen revivals, seen God work, heard His Word, been to church all their life, know what the Bible said, and still want to go party all the time. You're going to get yourself into a mess that you'll never get out of. This woman never did get straightened out after that. She turned into a pillar of salt. Number four, her procrastination. The angel said, don't look back. You say, well, what's wrong with looking? A lot. It cost this woman her life looking. She didn't do nothing. She didn't go back. She just looked back. In other words, she got up every morning and turned the TV on first thing. She didn't read her Bible. She got up every morning and turned the first thing. What do you think's on TV? Sodom and Gomorrah. Every day she got up, there's Whoopi Goldberg. And after that's Ellen. That's Sodom. And Lot said, you, and she said, I'm just looking. I'm looking. The Bible said Lot in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul. It don't say Lot did nothing. He saw it. If you sit around and watch, shows, well, you say, well, Ellen's just so funny. Maybe she is, but I can't look at her without going, oh. Amen. Hey, you know, one man said, one man said he looked at every woman that walked by. He kept looking at every woman that walked by, and they said, man, you, you, you need to quit. He said, I'm faithful to my wife. It don't matter if I look around a little bit. And they said, no, you're not supposed to do that. He said, I'm just looking. And he said, but see, I've, I've, I've done made my order. I'm just looking at the menu. And they said, you nut. If you go to any restaurant in the world, after you make your order, they take the menu away. <laughs> Amen. Y'all listening? After you order, you don't need the menu no more. You say, I'm just looking. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, he that looketh, he didn't say he'd do nothing. Looketh. Them eyes get you in trouble, brother. My eye affecteth my heart, the Bible said. Jesus said if you look and lust, you committed adultery in your heart. You know what our trouble was? Looking. 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 He who looked back soon be headed that way. No help to her husband and a terrible influence on her daughters. She wanted to watch E! Entertainment. She wanted to watch the uh, uh, Horror Wives of Atlanta. Uh, she wanted to watch uh, all kinds of everything come on dirty on TV. And she said, well, I'm not, I wouldn't, there's no way I'd ever do that, but I like to watch. You can be perverted in your mind and heart just watching. I'm talking about your phone. I'm talking about your computer. I'm talking about that. Hey, if you don't, you better watch out what you're looking at, people. Turn it. You say, it ain't hurting me. That's what she thought. You know what her problem was? Even though her body was out of Sodom, her heart was still back there. I believe with all my heart, these people sit in church every Sunday. Your body's here, but your heart's back there in the world somewhere. And the first chance you get, you'll run right to it. Her privileges, her procrastination. It ain't just wrong to go with them. Listen, kids, it ain't just wrong to go with them. It's wrong to want to go with them. It's wrong to want to go party. You say, well, I'm resisting it. You need to get your heart right. It ain't just wrong to do it. It's wrong to want to do it. Finally, her punishment. Her punishment. Her disobedience equaled her destruction. She goes down in history as the all-time example of a person who don't appreciate God's deliverance. Ladies and gentlemen, you can shorten your life by living in sin. A pillar of salt. Why did God turn her into a pillar of salt? I'm assuming. I've never, I've, I've looked, I've studied. I've never heard of a commentator come up with a better explanation. The whole area of their salt, the Dead Sea salt, salt, nothing can even grow or live around there, and, and fire and brimstone. God put all that salt. They say it comes in the river, and the river who, that feeds the Dead Sea brings salt in, and it stays there, and there ain't no outlet of the Dead Sea. It just evaporates water, but salt stays in it. That's what the scientists say. But I'm telling you, God fixed her as a pillar right there. Salt. You know why he covered that whole place with salt? Salt is supposed to uh, bring out poison out of meat and, and keep, uh, get rid of sin, in other words. And so her punishment was he turned her into a pillar of salt because she looked back. Let me 
I get a phone call not too long ago. A woman called me from another state. You don't know her. She said, Brother Danny, I want you to pray for my friend, a real good friend of hers. She called her name. She said she's going out on Friday nights. She gets with men. I said, is she saved? She said, yeah, yeah, she's, she says she's saved. But she's been going out partying, and she said, I'm worried about her. And I said, well, I will pray for her. About a month later, she'd call me, and she said, please pray for her. And name this girl, said she's getting wilder and wilder. She'll go out with he get with a man, come back, her and her husband get together. Then she'll go out and do it again. Then her and her husband get back. About every, about every few months, she's out with somebody different. And then one day she called me. She was tore all to pieces and crying, and she said, pray for so-and-so. She's got cancer. And she said, it's the kind of cancer, listen, ladies, it's the kind of cancer you get by being promiscuous. I'm not the judge. I'm not saying God. I'm not, I don't know. I mean, I might have cancer right now. You might too, so I'm not making any judgment. I'm just telling you what she told me. And about every few weeks, she'd call me and say, pray for her. She's going down. Pray for her. She's going down. Pray for her. She said that girl turned into a skeleton almost, just skin and bones and laid there. You listening, girls? You listening, boys? Men? She laid there and died with cancer because she kept looking back and kept going back into that sin. She kept going. You can't get peel, that drink, you keep looking back. You soon be going that way. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I guarantee you there's people in here today that you've been looking back and looking back, and if you had half a chance, you'd go out and do something stupid. And my warning you today, remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Let's stand. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. God's speaking to your heart. God's speaking to your heart this morning. I don't know who you are.